And the word of God reads, So we built the wall. The entire wall was joined together up to half its height. For the people had a mind to work. Now it happened when Sambalat, Tobiah, the Arabs, the Ammonites, and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were being restored and the gaps were beginning to be closed that they became very angry. And all of them conspired together to come and attack Jerusalem and create confusion. Nevertheless, we made our prayer to our God and because of them, we set a watch against them day and night. Drop down to verse 14. <clears throat> and I looked and arose and said to the nobles, to the leaders, and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. And it happened when our enemies heard that it was known to us and that God had brought their plot to nothing, that all of us returned to the wall, every one to his work. So it was from that time on that half of my servants worked at construction, while the other half held the spears, the shields, the bows, and wore armor. And the leaders were behind all the house of Judah. Those who built on the wall and those who carried burdens loaded themselves, so that with one hand they worked at construction, and with the other hand they held a weapon. Every one of the builders had his sword girded at his side as he built, and the one who sounded the trumpet was beside me. The title of our message is, Partnerships is the Reason You're Here, Where Are the Warriors? Partnerships are the re is the reason you're here, where are the warriors? Repeat after me. We are here. Subtopic, where are the warriors? As we started last week about partnerships and we talked about reasoning and the reason why God does things in our life. We said partnerships portion of our yearly theme is about a self-examination. And the question is, are you, am I being a good partner to what God is trying to do in my life? Because God can have a will for your life, but if we're not lined up to his will, we can actually hinder what God is doing. How many of you know that? When we look here in Nehemiah 4, as we said, Nehemiah realized he had a work to do. The walls around the city were in ruins, and it was jeopardizing the people of God. And the ruins were affecting what they were able to do for God. And many times we see in our life that there are things that happen that cause ruin, that cause damage, that causes things in our life to be in such a way that we don't know how we're going to get out of it. And we talked Holy Hills, we said that no matter what we're going through, God still share. We want to build up our lives. We want to build up the people of God, but we all got to do our part. Say amen, somebody. So and so and so we said if we're going to grow this ministry, there are three vital elements that we must have put together. First is the power of the word that is preached and teached. And that belongs to God. God will deliver the word. God will deliver the message that speaks directly to our lives. Secondly is our, the power of our love for God demonstrated in our praise and worship. That if we demonstrate our love for God and, our power, and the power of our love for God through our praise and worship, then it will cause a, a growth in the church. Amen. And the last one, not only is the power of the word, the power of our praise, but the power of our love one for another. Just like Nehemiah, we have to fill our position and do our role, play our part. Knowing your position and filling your role is, is what God has given you to do. Many different callings. He's called some prophets, some pastors, some evangelists, some teachers, the gift of giving, dance, all these different giftings is your purpose. But the reasoning is the circumstances that surround what you do. Reason is the place God places you to do what he tells you to do. Are y'all with me? Reasoning is what happens while I'm trying to fulfill my purpose. Reasoning is the things I have to deal with on my journey to a better destination. And, and the thing that we all have in common is every one of us struggle to make sense out of the reason and things happen in our life. 
why bad things happen to good people. Why babies are born stillborn. Why that the people we love are taken from us so soon. We struggle with the reason of these things and trying to figure out why things happen. And we said you got to trust God in all things. Reason is the journey we all must take in order to make sense out of this thing called life. Every day you have to deal with reasoning. So even in the church, you have to know your reason for being here. Say amen, somebody. Because you can know your purpose, what you're supposed to do, but if you can't figure out why you're here to do it, you will be ineffective. Amen, somebody. You're here to be a kingdom partner so that we can build what God has given us. And we said, based upon this text last week, there are three reasons God would have you here. Hallelujah. We said, number one, God has you here to be a warrior. Number two, God would have you here to be a builder. Or God would have you here to be a distraction. Either you're, the reason you're being here, not what you do, but why you're here to do it, is either you are a warrior, God brings you here to be a builder, or you're here to be a distraction. Amen, somebody. I, I come today to try to encourage the warriors in the house. I come to encourage and build up the warriors in the house to let you know that you have a reason for being here and you are needed. Somebody say amen. amen. We need the warriors in the house. When you, when you look at the text, we find that Nehemiah's purpose was to build the wall. The reason was the thing surrounding him that was causing him to build the wall up. His reason was in verse 14. He said, fight for your brethren, fight for your sons, fight for your daughters, fight for your families. We need to build the walls so that our families, our children, our brothers, and our sisters don't have to struggle with the things we went through. We got to stay on the wall, church. It, it, it sometimes we, we lose sight of it I told the leaders yesterday that sometimes we can be so round the church that we forget there is a hell and, and we forget that people are busting hell wide open through the church because we lose sight of what we're supposed to be doing it matters how you live and in order for us to reach people in order for us to bring about change in their life we've got to have warriors in the church amen somebody so, so Nehemiah Dealing with this problem, he decides to divide the people between the builders, the warriors, to deal with those who are distraction. I'm getting ahead of myself. Look at verse 16. And so it was from that time on, half of my servants worked at construction and building, while the other half held spears, the shields, the bows, and the armor. And the leaders were behind the house of Judah. So he said, and from that point on, in order to deal with what we had to deal with, he divided the builders, those who were here to build, and from the warriors, those who are here to war. So who are the warriors in the house? Paul says in Ephesians 6, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand the wiles of the devil, that you might be able to stand and fight against the enemy. The warriors of the church are those who are built for warfare. The warriors of the church are those who are built for battle. Stay with me. The warriors of the church are those who wear the armor of God. The warriors of the church are the ones who are strong in the weapons of our warfare. They are able to operate in spiritual things. Paul also says in 2 Corinthians 10, 4, to verify this, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. What you see happening this morning is the spiritual warfare that warriors, good God Almighty, must take forth in the battle against the enemy, a battle against what the enemy is trying to take from us, the battle against what we have gone through in our life. We need to be able to understand that when we come to this place, we come here to do battle, y'all. We're not just coming to have church. We're not just coming to sit under these pretty lights and look at the pretty decorations and hear the pretty music. Every time we come here, y'all, we come here for warfare. So Nehemiah said in verse 16, the warriors hold the spears, the shields. They hold the armor. 
They were the ones while the builders were building, the warriors stood guard so the builders could build the wall. Are y'all with me? So while the builders were building, the warriors stood. They didn't try to build. They understood that their job was to protect the builders. While the builders were building, the warriors were fit for battle. The warriors are the ones who have a great desire for spiritual things. The warriors are the ones of among us who love to operate in his spirit. They have a need to feel the spirit of God moving. Oh, Lord, I'm, I'm trying to help some of us here recognize that we are the warriors of the house. That they, they really can uh, begin to operate until they sense the spirit of God. They have the ability to feel the presence of God. The warriors are the one that has the ability to see when we're not properly aligned with the spirit and things are off. They have that ability to sense the spirit. They understand spiritual things. They are the strongest when they can flow in the spirit. When, when they're able to flow in the spirit, that's when they feel that they are their strongest. That's when they feel invincible. Good God Almighty. When they can feel the spirit coming. Preachers will say, I, I feel my help coming on. That's them saying, I, I can feel God moving in the place. And they're able to operate and watch this do things that they would not normally do. Because the spirit of God has fallen upon them. The warriors, the warriors are the ones who are natural protectors and defenders. They're naturally gifted to be protectors. They're naturally gifted to be defenders. They are the ones who don't run from a fight. They are the ones who run to the fight. Can I talk about it just a little bit? Before you even got saved, you was a defender and protector in your family. When all the cousins got together and started having fun, if somebody messed with one of your cousins, you were the first one to say, move out the way, move out the way. Who you talking to? You talking to them, you talking to me. You were always the one they got to be pulling back. That's why your shirt was always wrinkled and stretched. Y'all ain't gonna talk. You was always the one that was ready for a fight. You was the one mama and them always said, y'all go out there and get your brother and tell him, I said, come in here. The warriors are the one, Brother Marcus, that mastered the one, two in elementary school. Told him the one, two when he was young, y'all. You got to fight for yourself. If you don't deal with a bully, they're always going to bully you. And I could go up to the school and deal with it for you, but I'd rather teach you the one, two. And don't stop one, two until they through. And if it feels like a fight, don't be the first one to get hit. You start throwing one, two. Till somebody pulls you off of them. But we save now that we all supposed to fight no more, we. I've been delivered from all my fighting ways. The fighter is still inside of you. You just now saved, oh, good God, Amaya. But there's still a warrior inside of you. And if somebody cut up, you kind of look. What, what, what the hell are they saying? Why they can't let just let them get in the car? What? Who said what to who? Give me a reason. Y'all ain't going to Anybody know anybody like that in their family? You don't even call them. Because <laughs> when they... The warriors don't run from the fight. The warriors run to the fight. Warriors have perfected the skills of our warfare. They can see the tricks of the enemy. They can see what the enemy is trying to do. They have the spiritual discernment to see what the enemy is trying to do. But because they're natural defenders and protectors, they're able to guard themselves. Because some people are blind to the tricks of the enemy. <laughs> but a warrior can see it and know how to pray against that thing without even telling the person. Am I talking right about it? That you can see what spirit is operating in their life and you begin to bind that spirit before they even get to you. You see them walking. I bind the spirit of manipulation in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood over that manipulative spirit. Oh, hey, how you doing? Prophet, that's the warrior is able to spot it. The warriors, as Nehemiah called them, are mentally and spiritually tough. 
They have the fortitude and the strength to stand in the fight. The warrior is able to stand and fight for what is right. They have a desire in them to see things go about what God wants, and they are refusing to let things go against God's will, and they'll fight anyone to do what God has called them to do. Amen, someone. I, I came to encourage the warriors of the church. So watch this. If you feel like what I just described describes you, I want you to come sit on the first two pews. If you feel like you're a warrior, you have a warrior spirit in you, I want you to come sit on the first two pews. Even if at the child, you was the one that fought all the time, I want you to come sit on the first two pews. These are the warriors, church. These are the warriors of the house. Come on, make room for them. There's a reason for you being here. You are the warriors. That's right, make room for them. Hallelujah. Prophets, I want you to come sit amongst them. Third row. We'll make the third row. If you're already up here, prophet, you ain't got to move. You're already here. Minister Brown, Minister Borkins, come on up. Singers are the warriors. Musicians are the warriors. Minister, go and join them. Hallelujah. I come to encourage you today. I come to build you up. This message is for you today. Because you are the warriors of this house. Everything God does, God would do it by tribes. The children of Israel were set up by tribes. There was the tribe of Judah. There was the tribe of Benjamin. There was the tribe of Levi. God would categorize the people based on their gifting. God would categorize the people based on their effort. And Nehemiah did the same thing. I come to encourage you this morning that you are the warriors of the house. You are the tribe of warriors that God has called to do battle in this house. And in order for us as the people of God to build, in order for us as the people of God to do what God has called Holy Hills to do, the warriors must be capable and strong and know that when you come here, you come to do battle. Amen, church. I, I come to encourage you and let you know that you have a reason for being here. Amen. I come to encourage you and build you up and let you know that even though we go through our differences and even though you feel like sometimes you're being torn apart, God has called you to be a warrior in, in this house. If you are a prophet, if you are an usher, if you are a deacon, if you are a singer, if you are a musician, God has called you to be a warrior in this house. So warriors, I come to give you a few things to help you in your warfare. First point, before I say anything else, Warriors, you got to watch out for the disruptors because they hide in plain sight. They're trying to tear your team apart. So you got to be careful of the disruptors because they will hide in plain sight. Let me tell you from the scripture. It says in verse 7 that Sambalat and Tobiah heard that the warriors were guarding the wall while the builders were building and they got upset. Sambala and Tobias decided that they would disrupt the building process. They were children of Israel as well. They were brethren to what Nehemiah was doing. But because they didn't like what Nehemiah was doing, good God Almighty, they decided they, they would disrupt it. Let me help you to identify the disruptors. The disruptor is the, normally the person who's the most angry. The disruptor is the person who normally brings the most negativity. The disruptor is the one with the worst attitude. And, and Jesus said, be angry, but sit not. And sometimes because you're gifted as a warrior, but sometimes because you're gifted as a fighter, sometimes you're gifted to do things that God has called you to do, but you don't understand the reason for things that happen. Instead of fighting for God, you'll fight against what God is doing. And the most dangerous thing is to have someone that's gifted and fighting and fighting for the wrong team. In the military, they call it fratricide. That's dying from friendly fire. That's being destroyed by someone who's supposed to be on your team, but they're stabbing you because they're disruptors. The disruptor, watch this, is the angriest person because normally the person that's the angriest caused the most damage. The most wo warriors, you got to be careful of controlling your temper. 
because you're a fighter inside of you and you know that so you understand that I got to stay under control I got to stay calm because if I let them get on my nerves and they set me off they're going to have to take three or four people to pull them off of am I telling y'all the truth so you try to disuse yourself. You say, I don't even want to be a part of it. Don't even tell me. Because you're a fighter. And you understand that you have been given this ability to fight. But you got to control it. Don't let the hawk loose, y'all. Yeah. But some of us walk around with the hawk on 100 all the time. And people constantly trying to talk you off the ledge. Calm down. It's not that serious. It's going to be all right. I'm constantly. Because he's a warrior. He's a warrior. So you got to be careful that you are not a disruptor in your ability to be a warrior. The warriors will try to tear down every, uh, excuse me, the disruptors will try to tear down everything that God is trying to build. They shoot down every new idea. I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> no, we just need to do it the same way we've been doing it all along. They got the warrior spirit. I'm trying to deliver you in the house. No, I don't like that. And because they got so much voice and they got so much fight in them, watch this. The warrior uses the intimidation. Because the warrior who's a disruptor knows that people would rather let it go than cause a conflict. All right, we're just going to move on then. <laughs> because you're a warrior, but you've become a disruptor. Because you're not fighting for the kingdom of God. You're fighting against the kingdom of God. Somebody say, Lord, help me. They have to deal with every conflict with battle. Warriors, you have to understand God has equipped you to be the warriors of this house. But whenever there's a work going forth in the Lord, you got to be careful not to allow the warrior mentality to disrupt what God has given us to do. Fight for the kingdom. Don't fight against the kingdom. So Samballot and Tobiah, watch this, they decided they were going to be disruptors. So Nehemiah said, okay, I'm going to fix that. He decided that he would cause the warriors to stand guard against Samballot and Tobiah. And it says that in verse 9, he said, we made a prayer to God, and because of them, we set a watch against the enemy day and night. He said, you're not going to stop the building of God. So Sambala and Tobiah, whatever disruption you're going to try to do, I'm going to deal with it this way. I'm going to let the builders build while the warriors set watch. Warriors first, be careful of being a disruptor. Secondly, the warrior is the one who must keep a watchful eye. Warriors, you are the ones who must keep a watchful eye in the sanctuary. Nevertheless, the warriors must keep a watchful eye against the attacks of the enemy. Every soldier in the military, warriors, and I liken you to the military, every soldier, whether it be the Army, the Air Force, the Navy, or the Marines, one of the first few things they teach the war uh, soldiers, first they teach us how to march. Then they teach us how to follow orders. I'm preaching real good to y'all. Next, they teach us how to use our weapons. Am I right, D? And after they teach you how to march, am I right, Sister Stacy? After they teach you how to uh, uh, follow orders, after they teach you how to uh, uh, use your weapon, the next thing they say is go stand watch. Am I right? And you got to stand post for 12 to 15 hours. No bathroom breaks, no water. And you better not fall asleep, just stay in your post. Warriors, you got to stay in your post. You are the ones with the watchful eyes. What are we watching over, warriors? You're watching over everything that needs to be protected. You're watching over everything that's important to the house of God. You're watching over everything that is needed in order for us to touch the people of God. You're watching over the praise to make sure nothing contaminates the praise. You're watching, Lord Jesus, help us in here. You're watching over the musicians to make sure nothing distracts the musicians. Ushers, you're watching over the door to make sure nobody comes in here to disrupt things. You're watching over the pulpit to make, Lord Jesus, that's why some of you watch me like you do because you have a warrior's mentality. And when you come here, you come to stand God. The warriors must have a watchful eye. 
1 Peter 5 and 8. I'll read it to you. You write it down. 1 Peter 5 and 8. It says, be sober. Be vigilant. Be watchful for your adversary roams the earth like a lion seeking whom he may. That's why the scripture says, Sister Stacy, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than dwell in the tents of the wicked because you're the watchful eye. Making sure nothing is going out of order because I'm a warrior and I must stand and watch my post. Matthew 26, 41. Jesus said, watch, pray, lest you enter into temptation. The warriors are the ones who watch over what needs to be protected. You are gifted to watch over the anointing of this house. You're gifted to watch over our families. You're gifted to watch over the leaders. You're gifted to watch over the love of the house. And you must use the weapon of our warfare. It's not carnal. It's not with your words. The weapon of our warfare is our praise warriors. The weapon of our warfare is our prayer life warriors. The weapon of our warfare is our fasting warriors. The weapon of our warfare is our discernment warriors. The weapon of our warfare is interpretation of what God is saying in the spirit realm warriors. You cannot fight with hands. You cannot not fight with words you must use spiritual gifts to do what God is calling us to do in his house the warriors must stand guard and keep a watchful eye over the things we need to protect in this house how can anyone enter a strong man's house unless they first bound up the strong man then he can enter in and take whatever they want well, let's put it in the house. How can the enemy steal what he wants in this house unless he first bound up the warriors? If the warriors are bound up, if the warriors are fighting against warriors, if the warriors got an attitude against another warrior, you all are bound up. You are all tied up, and you leave the people of God defenseless. That's why it's a struggle sometimes because if the warriors are bound, if the warriors are distracted, if the warriors are so tied up, then all the enemy has got to do is come in here and take what he wants because the warriors are bound up. The enemy can't rob us unless the warriors are tied up. So you've got to stay free. You've got to be mindful of that, that just because God called you to be a warrior, the enemy knows you're a warrior too. And all week long, he's trying to bind you up. He's trying to tie you up. He's trying to get you to know if I can push that button, they're already a warrior. They'll set it off. So you've got to be mindful of that. I can't let anything bind me up. We stop. Thank you, Jesus. That's why God ministered the way he wanted to minister this morning. Warriors, you got to stay free. Stay free from offenses. Stay free from the trivial things. Stay free from anything that's going to bind you up. Because when you get bound, warriors, then the enemy can come in and take whatever he wants. God allows me as pastor to trust the warriors. That when I'm ministering and doing what God has called me to do, I got to have warriors around me. That's Lord Jesus. Why do you think the enemy is running in churches shooting guns? Because the warriors are bound up. So the enemy can just walk in. It hadn't always been that way in the kingdom of God. There's been a times you were scared to even walk by a church and cuss. Am I right? Because they had warriors in there on their knees praying. They had, Lord Jesus, they had warriors in there anointing the sanctuary. They had warriors that was praying all the time and interceding. Just because you're not on the intercessory prayer team, you're still a warrior. You've been gifted to pray against the enemy. How can anyone take from us unless they first bind up the strong men of the house? Nehemiah told the warriors, stand guard while the builders build. First warriors, you must keep a watchful eye. Number two, the warrior is responsible for setting the atmosphere. The atmosphere that we operate in is your responsibility, warrior. The warrior is responsible. That's why I have the musicians, the singers, everybody sitting here. You are responsible for the atmosphere so that the builders can build. Now, on this point, you're responsible for the atmosphere. God had me do research on an operating room. And I said, Lord, why an operating room? God said, do research on an operating room. So I did research, warriors. 
on the operating room, and I found out that an operating room has a team, and that surgery is the last resort that they save for the sickest patients. They try to do other forms of medicine, those that are here in medicine, am I right, Minister Johnson? They try to fix it with therapy. They try to fix it with rehab. Surgery is the last resort. So when they finally tell a patient, you're sick enough, you got to go into surgery, the only way we can correct this is with surgery. There is a team that operates, right? The first one on the team is the surgeon. The surgeon is the one who calls the shots. The surgeon is the one who says scalpel, suction, gauze. How's the patient's status? The surgeon is the one who's strategically working in the operating room. Next is the surgical assistant or the nurse. They're the ones that give the surgeon what he needs. Oh, good God Almighty. To do what he needs to operate in the operating room. So you got the surgeon, you got the surgical tech, you got the nurse, and then you got the anesthesiologist. Y'all stay with me. The anesthesiologist is the one that the patient see first and the one that the patient see last. The anesthesiologist wanna say, okay, Mr. Brown, we want you to count back from 100 to one. You go, okay, 199. <laughs> if any of y'all ever been to surgery board, that's why they keep that stuff under lock and key. That anesthesiologist ain't no joke. And the anesthesiologist is the one that's watching the patient while the surgeon is standing there like this. And the anesthesiologist is the one that says, Doctor, it's all right for you to operate now. Because the anesthesiologist is no good at his job if in the middle of surgery, the patient wake up and go, ah! <laughs> It's time to find a new anesthesiologist. So the anesthesiologist makes sure the patient is medicated so that the surgeon can work. I said, God, why would you have me study an operating room? Because the warriors are responsible for the atmosphere. So warriors, you got the surgeon who operates. You got the surgical tech who assists the, uh, the doctor. You got the anesthesiologist who helps the patient stay in a state so that the, op the doctor can operate it. But watch this. There's another person that is so important that nobody else can do what they need to do unless this person does their job. They don't get any recognition. They're not there to check on you. You never see them. I didn't even know it existed, and I had to practice so that I could say it right. So here we go. It's called the aseptic technician. The, yeah, yeah, the aseptic technician. I said, it ain't real. Yeah, it's a real job. The aseptic technician is responsible for asceticism. I said, Lord, that's still another big word. I don't even know what that is. The aseptic technician, y'all, is the one that makes sure that the operating room is clean and sterile. The aseptic technician, because they use the same operating, y'all ain't gonna talk, anybody had surgery? They say, oh, we can bring you in at seven, we can bring you in at nine, we can bring you in at 11. It's like they serving Happy Meals in there. I'm like, how are you operating all these people back to back? Oh, doctor, operate all day long. But the doctor, once he finished one patient, he leaves it just like it is until the aseptic technician goes in and cleans it. He sterilizes it. He wipes the walls down. He makes sure that there's no bacteria or contaminants. That's why when the doctor comes in, everything is sterile because the aseptic technician and make sure everything was right. If the aseptic technician does not sterilize the atmosphere of the operating room, the doctors cannot operate, and the patient is in jeopardy of being infected by the disease and the in infection that the aseptic technician has missed. This job is so important, warriors, that not only do they have an aseptic technician to make sure operating rooms are sterile, I found out there's also aseptic technicians in the food industry. These are the ones that make sure the chicken don't have any salmonella. These are the ones that make sure the beef don't have any cold. Y'all ain't gonna talk. And we just go to the store, we buy it. Some of us don't even clean it before we cook it. Don't you ever do that? And invite me over, because I'm telling you. Some folks buy it, take it out the pack, put it right under the gear. Because they trust 
that the aseptic technician has made sure it was clean without contaminants. So they have them in the hospital. They, they have them in the food industry. They have them in the drug industry. The aseptic technician is the one that puts the seals on your medicine. So when you go get your bottle of Tylenol, you peel the plastic off the lid, you peel the plastic off the inside, and you start popping them things in your mouth like Tic Tac. You don't check to see if it's contaminated. You don't check to see if they got the ingredients right. You just trust that the aseptic technician, when they put them seals on it, it was good to go. The aseptic technician is responsible for removing contaminants. Are y'all with me? I'm talking about y'all are responsible for setting the atmosphere. The aseptic technician is responsible for making sure everything is sterile. Praise team and musicians, hear me real good. You are the aseptic technicians of the church. You are responsible for making sure the atmosphere has no contaminants. You are responsible for making sure the atmosphere is right so that the people of God can receive the word of God. We may not make it sterile in here, but I need some warriors that will make it sanctified. Jesus, good God Almighty. I need you to sing to the atmosphere sanctified. I need you to play your instruments to the atmosphere sanctified. I need you to minister in song to the atmosphere sanctified. Because the people that come in here are patients. And they're sick. And they come to the church as a last resort. That God, if you don't fix it. But how can we operate on them if we operate in a contaminated operating room? If, if, if the aseptic technician... He leaves behind germs. If the aseptic technician cleans his nose or his ear and then touches something, whatever is in the aseptic technician will be left behind. Lord, warriors, whatever is inside of you, if you don't pray it off of you, you'll leave contaminant in the atmosphere that jeopardizes the care of the patients. Now, you say, Pastor, how did this all work? Well, I'm not the surgeon. I'm the anesthesiologist. I'm pushing the drug. Y'all. I'm pushing the word of God. I'm pushing the word into their system. Y'all. Come on, that's right. To soothe them. To medicate them. So that the Holy Ghost can operate on them. So if we don't see deliverance taking place, it's because the surgeon, the Holy Ghost, say the atmosphere is not. And the Holy Ghost won't cut them open. Do you understand how important you are? Every note you play, every word you sing. You are the aseptic technician that makes sure the house is right. Can I go just a little bit further? Turn back over to 2 Chronicles 20. Church, I appreciate y'all being here, but this is the Warriors Day today. I'm trying to bless some warriors in here. 2 Chronicles 20. Drop down to verse 20. 2 Chronicles 20, verse 20. Are you there? It says, So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. Verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness. And he said to them, go out before the army. Stand in front of the army and sing, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. Now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set an ambush against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. Praise, sing musicians, you are the warriors that we set out before the army 
to make sure that the atmosphere is right, to make sure that you keep a watchful eye. And the last thing the warriors do are you are the ones that fight the battles. You are the ones that God sets in the house for the reason of setting the atmosphere, for keeping a, keeping a watchful eye, to make sure that everything is right so that we can fight the battles. Warriors, you are responsible for fighting the battles for the people of God. You are our first line of defense. That's why Brother Frank, Sister Stacy, your crew, you greet them in the parking lot. You walk them in there at the door. Hello, the battle of warfare has already started. So if we got someone standing on the door that's all messed up, the people can't even get in the house. Because they think, oh, I'm just, it's just my week to usher, so I'm just going to run in here. No, you got to pray for you get here. Brother Frank told me, he said, Pastor, I'm, I'm watching the door. I'm watching everybody that come in here. Sometimes Brother Frank go out and he check the people out before they get here because he's trying to make, y'all ain't going to talk back to me. I said, well, Brother Frank, you ain't got to, he said, no, 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 Pastor. I ain't letting nobody come up in here. That ain't right. I said, well, amen, Brother Frank, just, amen, Brother Frank. He was serious about that thing, mother. He said, oh, I ain't. If they ain't right, they ain't coming in here. Because he's a warrior. The ushers, you are warriors. You are first line of defense. You are the ones who fight the battles for the people who can't fight for themselves. Some people are so hurt that they can't even fight for themselves. So they need us to fight for them. Jesus said, be wise as a serpent, but harmless as as a dove. The warriors are our first line of defense. The warriors are the ones responsible for our entrance into the kingdom of God. Like we see in 2 Chronicles, they sung eight words, y'all. Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. Hear me, praise team. It's not what you sing. It's how you sing it. You got it with passion with excitement that when I address the microphone I am a warrior and I'm an aseptic technician making the atmosphere right so that somebody can get operated on the day. Somebody say amen. amen. Warriors you must fight with a clean heart and most importantly you must fight with faith. So praise team are the warriors, musicians are the warriors, ushers are warriors, doorkeepers are warriors. Lastly prophets you are the warriors God is called to do battle. Prophets in the Old Testament were warriors. Come here, Elijah. Go over to about 1 Kings 18. The prophets of Baal. 450 against one. And he said to them, Hear me, O children of Israel. Choose the day whom you will serve. If it be the Lord thy God, serve him. If it be prophet Baal, serve him. I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to have a little showdown. He said, we're going to make an altar. Baal, get whatever you want. Get all your prophets. Do whatever you got to do. Because when it's my turn, it's going to be, Lord Jesus. Prophets, hear me. The gift inside of you comes with authority. The gift that God has given you to speak comes with power. That no matter what you've gone through, no matter what you've got to face, when you speak, God expects what you speak to be so final that the battle is, Lord Jesus, the battle is over when the prophet speaks. The Bible says that Elijah killed all 450 prophets with one sword in one day. Now watch this. After this great big battle, the warrior prophet was so insecure, he went to hide. He was afraid. Prophets, that's why you struggle with emotional highs and emotional lows. It's because the warrior inside of you. But watch how this works together. If we could get the atmosphere right, and the prophets know the authority that they have, when we stand up to minister, who can stop us? Because you are the warriors of the house. Elijah was a warrior prophet. He didn't take no mess. He wasn't afraid. He stood boldly. And that's why I thank God for what he was doing at the altar this morning. Because he was working 
on the warriors of the house. If we're going to build kingdom partnerships, we need y'all. If we're going to turn this ministry and go in a new direction, we need you to understand your duties as the warriors of the house. You are called to be warriors. You are the first line of defense. And everything you do, do it for a reason. If it don't touch you, it's not going to touch the people. If it don't move you, it's not going to move the people. And don't hold back on something God gave you to help somebody else. Because that might be the anesthesia they need to put them in a place that God can work on them. Many times God can't work because we haven't delivered what we needed to deliver. And in the midst of God working on them, they go, ah! Because we haven't given them the anesthesia, which is the word of God. The warriors hold the line so that the enemy cannot steal anything from us. And so Nehemiah said, while the builders were building, the warriors held the line. We need warriors to partner with the builders in the house so that we can do the work that God has called us to do. Warriors, beware of the distractions. Don't become the distractor. Keep a watchful eye. The atmosphere. And almost, and lastly, fight the battles for those who can't fight for themselves. Amen? Amen?